Welcome everybody back to another Eternal Evolution uh, character deep dive video. Now today, we're going to be going over a character that you're going to have very, very early in the game. The game actually feeds this character to you. He is Omar. You can kind of see him to the right of my head. He is the crab looking mechanical dude. He is an AoE type healer. And between him and Karma, who is also right beside him, those are both AoE type characters. Uh, both, as you develop them, kind of suck. You know, I'm never going to use Karma again, most likely. But I do find a use for Omar in late game, which we'll show some footage of after the uh, deep dive. But um, you're, you're not really going to use him in mid game because he's going to get supplanted by like a Ravina or a Luke who are much, 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 much better uh, AoE type characters. But if you don't get them, and if you can get a highly developed Omar, you're still going to use him. So thus, this video. Now let's dive in. So Omar, this is of course the uh, pay to win account. Uh, I got Omar uh, all the way, just cranked him up to Immortal. Because I pulled so many copies of him on the Maserani banner when I was going for my Maserani, who is also Immortal. So that was a two for one. Uh, you have him in your roster. He he is usable. Uh, there are much better AOE characters, but let's dive into Omar. Uh, I will admit that this is a cool look. I do like the uh, animated crab, ticked off mech, big guns coming out of his face look. Very, very cool design, so kudos to the developers on that. Let's go into his skills first. So his ultimate Omar summons two bombers bombers to carpet bomb the area, dealing uh, an attack percent damage uh, to all enemies in the area. So it's an AoE. He basically, it's a little circle with a bunch of ships come in and they all just shoot the target. So big AoE. Uh, and the talent modifier is the damage dealt by the skills just increased by 30%. Nothing flashy, just boom, another 30% damage on top. Skill two. Uh, Omar fires a scorching missile at the target that explodes over their head, scattering the shells uh, that inflict 150% of attack damage, or attack as damage to enemies within the area. So he's basically just carpet bombing, you know, kind of napalm too, right? Because the talent effect says the flame left on the ground underneath your targets now, or underneath the explosion area, will deal 80% of attack damage per second to enemies within range, lasting for four seconds. So he does an AOE once, and then he does a big AOE dot next. Uh, keep in mind that that is 80% of attack as damage again. So all of his, all of his abilities are doing attack percentage uh, damage. Uh, skill three, the caster Omar uh, fires an explosive shell at the target that explodes on impact, deals 150% attack as damage on the target, and all enemies within a small area. So another big uh, AOE based on a percentage of attack. The talent modifier is damage inflicted increased by 13%. Very boring is what it is. Just another damage bump to do his talents. And then his passive is when Omar inflicts skill damage to an enemy. So when he basically any damage from a skill, skill damage, so not basic skill damage, which means his ultimate and his uh, second and third skills, he gains a shield equal to 61% of attack. Now, since it says skill, this the wording's weird here. When this shield is in effect, so my question was, do other shields also apply this effect? As in the shield from uh, the healing prototype. If you have Maserani on the team, and Omar's in the back row of those shields. Do those shields also do this or do they not? And I, I don't know. I should probably test this out in the future, but just keep that in mind that uh, it's probably the way it's worded. Uh, he's going to gain a shield equal to 60% of his attack on skill damage. Uh, and then uh, burn, uh, which uh, when the shield is in effect, Omar inflicts burn on any enemy hit. So when he hits somebody, he's going to apply a dot. So uh, shield goes up based on attack damage after he does a skill. And then uh, when he's attacking people, he's going to do a, another dot. So uh, and then the level breaks, the shield increases to 67, 73, and then 80%. So the stacking limit, uh, the talent modifier is the stacking limit of the burn effect is increased to four stacks. 
So you can get up to uh, 20%, uh, so increased damage taken from Omar burn. Increase the damage taken from Omar by basically 20% for 10 seconds. So the dot uh, goes up to 20%. So very, very cool. A very, very basic character. Uh, just damage AOEs and dots, right? Very, very simple design characters. So not a whole lot to worry about here. Um, on his talents, you do want the big four, right? Because they modify his skills. And then, yes, get the other two. Uh, so this one, after the ultimate spell is cast, the damage of the next ability is increased by 15%. So just the damage bump there. And this one you have to get to get uh, that one. So get them all, get all the big ones. I would not recommend spending any soul potions on anything other than what you need to get here because he's a very niche character. He has limited uses and there's much better characters in the game, especially as you move into mid and late game, you're gonna, you're not gonna use this guy for much. I, have, on the other hand, don't have any AOE damage dealers, so I still uh, get some use out of him. Now let's look at his equipment. So all of his skills based around uh, attack damage, right? So his attack. Uh, based around attack. So right there you see my attack is 35,000, right? 35,000. So all of his skills are going to do damage based on a multiplier uh, or a percentage of that attack. Uh, so one could maybe just get away with three attack sets, three hero sets, which is what they recommend. The game is going to recommend to you to just use hero sets because... His shield is based on his uh, attack damage and uh, his abilities are based on attack damage. But like any damage dealer, especially in late game, you want him to be critting and you can do crit damage. There's nothing in his kit uh, that holds him back from making, uh, doing crits and, and doing crit damage. So build him that way because it's just gonna, it, when you run the math, it's just gonna give you more damage in general. So, gear him uh i i run him like this and i i recommend him like this as i got one sun signet so crit chance set and then two crit damage set so i got him at 66 percent crit and 62 percent crit damage the the basic strategy for damage dealers is 60 to 65 percent crit rate and then try to maximize size you can get your attack and your crit damage is there an argument for more attack than crit damage here Yes, because his skills are doing damage based on that attack number. Not the crit damage number, but the attack number, right? So there is an argument for that, but I like him like this, and he does what I need him to do geared like this, so this is how I got him geared. Let's look at his exclusive right away. I, you know, got to be careful with this one. This is probably the most boring exclusive I've ever read. Saturation bombing, which I'm assuming is his ultimate, because that's the one that's doing a bombing run inflicts bonus damage depending on how few targets it has so up to 14 percent. so we don't know exactly if for three or four to three to two to one but it can max out as an additional 14 percent damage and then at the 10 20 and 30 limit breaks it's just upping that number 23 percent 37 percent 55 percent as the max right so so very very boring the only thing that's nice about his uh exclusive is that it gives flat attack percentage uh, which is goes directly to everything on his kit. So I took him up to five. I'm not taking up any taking up anywhere further than five. I don't need to. He does exactly what I need him to do, uh, which is uh, Sinsaro Marsh level 15, just fine with a plus five and the gear that he has on him. So he is in all regards done for me. His development is now capped, done, lock him away, move on to the next. So that is Omar. You have him, I have him. Everybody has them. Here's how you build them. Now let's go check out some gameplay. All right, so let's queue up. Uh, the only really place I use Omar now is uh, Sincero Marsh. I think I'm saying that right. Sinsaros Marsh. Uh, 15. So uh, using Omar uh, on manual, and we're going to move over the footage here. I'm just actually doing it on my free-to-play account as well. So let's move over here and we're going to pop my face in here since I'm going to be right on the boss. You don't need to see the boss. So I actually just got this down today, which was uh, timely because I also wanted to make a video on Omar seeing as how I just got him to immortal. 
but I was scratching my head on, on where I could show you some actual real uh, use footage for him. And um, let me start it up. So I tried him in here. And um, Sensaro Marsh, I'm not going to tell you the mechanics of the fight, but um, I was trying to run different combinations of characters to see how well they could do. I was even running like a lower uh, evolved uh, Ravina, and just nothing was working. So these are the that's the commander I use, which is Im important. So if we just go back, so no, 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 go back, go back, right there. So let's pop. Stop it. Right there. So this is important, you know, full disclosure in these videos, because if I'm showing you how to do something, I need to show you exactly how I did it. Now, um, middle gives health, which uh, buffs up Maserati's healing. This is my pay to win account. So keep in mind that this Maserati is immortal and uh, geared well with all of his talents. And I think he's got a 20 exclusive. So uh, I did try putting in, uh, removing Crete and removing Maserati. I never tried um, leaving Crete and putting in like a Serena. I tried to use uh, non-SSS characters and just uh, I couldn't keep them up, even though uh, really this fight is about your damage. Uh, so keep in mind that I am running two uh, immortal SSs, a healer and a tank, but uh, both of these guys, Nagrama and Omar, are immortal. But if you're doing 15, you're probably going to need them that way. If you're doing lower levels, this comp can still work. You can still run an Artis as your tank, and you can still run like a Serena or Loran as your healer. But just to let you know, last stage, 15, and you're going to need something a little bit more beefier than that. So, And then this I wanted to show you too. It is This, this commander, which is the AoE commander, has a Nagrama all skills, which did uh, I would say did help me in this fight. So... Full disclosure, there it is. Right? Everyone on here is immortal. And let's go. So, you see right there, they're both on manual. Um, because I found that Nagrama and Omar, uh, they'll just burn their ultimates willy-nilly. They'll just, and they'll, for the most part, they'll probably pick the boss. They will just ignore the ads. And the ads, if you don't know if the spiders, those spiders right there, you gotta kill as soon as possible. Otherwise, when and where they die, they put down some poison, and from that poison is where the green spiders are going to spawn, and the green spiders are going to go towards the boss and kill you. So, Nagrama is excellent here, I find, because his ultimate is a sustained burst AoE type damage. So, you use him on the eggs. He really does, because look at him, he's just stuck on the eggs and he's killing them all and then he also his ultimate lasts so long that he will kill the spiders that spawn from the eggs omar i'm using mainly as cleanup but he is effective so i'm going to use omar there to kill these green spiders i'm going to point nagrama there and nagrama's beam is going to kill the see the spiders going around to the top he's going to kill those ones but there's also these ones coming in too and i did take a little bit of a hit as you see, Omar went down to half health. And then Omar is instantly going back to uh, cleanup duty. I am targeting him on the eggs there because Negrama's AoE was way down. But you get the point, right? So bring in... Omar's good for cleaning up just the, the little mini spiders that are going to spawn. Negrama's great for downing the eggs. And uh, you're going to have Omar because he's fed you from the beginning of the game. You should have Nagrama. You will have Nagrama if you were around for the uh, first Rise of Heroes event, because basically you got given an immortal Nagrama. If you don't, then you're gonna have to tr figure find another AOE healer, maybe Karma. But I find Nagrama is just excellent for the eggs. Karma might work in the lower uh, lower levels of this, but on 15, Nagrama is just so good. Uh, and then I brought in Senway. The current Rise of Heroes event is going to give you free Senways. You're going to get a well-developed Senway. I do have a video out on how to build your Senway effectively. Go review that after if you have to. But I found that the tank sits there, tanks the, tanks the adds. Uh, Senway does the damage on the boss. And then oh, this is where Omar shines. Right there. See him? He just picked off all those spiders. And save his ultimate for cleanup. Don't use his ultimate or Nagrama's on the boss. But I'm focusing too much on the fight as if I'm describing Sincero Marsh 15. This video is just to highlight to you that at endgame, Omar is still effective. You can still use him. 
I don't have AoE characters. It is the blaring weak spot in my roster. And I thought, hey, Omaru's AoE. Let's give him a try. And you know what? For what I need him to do... See, look at there. So Nagrama's AoE is picking off ones that are getting around him. But besides the point, for what I need him to do, Omar gets it done. So here's some gameplay just to highlight that you can use this character. So don't sleep on him. If you are free to play and you can't get a Ravina or a Luke, then maybe you can develop Omar. Definitely, if you're free to play, you're going to want to develop Omar. I am on my free to play account. If you're a pay to win character, you're probably not watching this video. <laughs> All right. So that's it for Omar. If you made it to the end of this video, oh, oh, there's, yeah, you saw that I just recorded that on my iPhone. If you made it to the end of this video, put spider in the comments. That's, that's, you know, I'm actually pairing up my, uh, my safe words with my videos now. Put spider in the comments. I'll know you made it to the end of this video. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peer <laughs> Peers. Peace. Cheers. Uh, goodbye.